Superbase recently released a brand new SDK called Superbase SSR. It's here to replace the old auth helpers package. And today I'm gonna to show you how it works and give you my thoughts. If you've been using Superbase in the past, you've almost certainly been using some of their auth helpers packages. Well, recently they put out a new SDK, which is technically in beta, but they still do actually recommend adopting it now, which is the Superbase SSR SDK. What this SDK does basically is it gives us a unified way to work with server-side environments with Superbase. Superbase initially did a lot, it was very heavily focused on client-side stuff, but these days most meta frameworks are all heavily based in SSR land, so they needed to create a better system to actually make this work, and I think they've done a very good job here. So I'm gonna show you guys what this actually looks like in the code base. The documentation for this is linked down below, so if you wanna get this incorporated into your project, you can go ahead and do that. I'll also link the silly little example I'm using in here down below. It's not like a real app or anything like that, but it does do a good job of showing how this is implemented in Svelkit. So the big thing with this new SSR SDK is basically what we end up doing is we end up creating a Superbase client for both the client and the server. If we look at the Next.js app I have here, within our layout.ts, which remember this can run in the browser, this can run client side, we're going ahead and we're creating a new Superbase instance here, which is a Superbase browser client. This browser client is being imported from the Superbase SSR package. We're passing in our Superbase URL and our Anarch key, and then we have to pass in a bunch of different things here to get it to work with the actual individual framework. Luckily, you don't really need to worry about all this stuff. It's all in their documentation for all the major meta frameworks. Next.js, Astro, Svelte, in the documentation for all those different frameworks, they have exactly what you need to get this working. So it's just uh, implementing the cookies methods, get passing in what the fetch implementation is because some frameworks like to be cute and implement their own fetch. And then we go ahead and we return our Superbase instance down here. Uh, very simple stuff. And we do the exact same thing on the server. On the server within our hooks.server.ts, we're just setting event.locals.superbase to be a Superbase server client. So now instead of going ahead and having like these special auth helpers for each package where we're creating like some special next instance or some special like Svelkin instance or whatever, we're just creating a server side instance and a client side instance via these two helper functions. So it's the exact same process as before, public URL and on key, we go ahead and pass in our cookies here. And then down here, they have a couple nice little um, helper methods, which are really nice to have, like the get session method, which we can use to help authenticate our users. And the only other thing of note to talk about here is gonna be within this app.d.ts file, we need to go ahead and type our locals so that it has Superbase as a Superbase client and it has get session as returning a promise of session or null. We wanna make sure that those are properly typed so that when we use these within our functions, they actually work. That's all we have to do to set this up. And I have this up and working within this tiny little Svelkit example app. Uh, all we're doing here is we have sign in with email and sign in with GitHub and a sign out button. So currently I'm signed out. We look at the uh, code for this and we go to page.svelte. But if you go down here on this page, it's super simple stuff. We just have a bunch of sign in functions and we have are pulling from our page.server.ts we're pulling out the user. So we're grabbing our user from our server side Superbase SDK and returning what we fetched to the end user. And in this case, our user is null, so nothing's being displayed here. But if I wanna hit here and I hit testing GitHub, we'll go ahead and do that. It'll take a moment to load as it signs in. We'll go back home and now it'll say welcome and then my email. And what I wanna talk about now is how that actually happened and how this now works, because it's a little different than how it used to work. This is now using PKCE for the actual authentication system. I'm not gonna go too deep into what that actually means and how that works, but really the gist of it is when we sign in with some provider or whatever, we sign in with Superbase, it's gonna send a callback to our server, which is gonna include a code. We can then exchange that code for a session. The code for that looks like this. If we go to our um, server.ts on our callback route, uh, you can see in here, this just ran. So you can see when we came back to this route from the Superbase servers, we did not, we had a code, but we didn't have a user and we didn't have a session because these run first. And then I printed out the code here. This was the code that it sent back. And then all we went ahead and did here is we exchanged this code for a session. So this help, this SDK does all that for us. It sets the cookies, does everything we need. And then we go ahead and redirect them to the welcome page. And the welcome page, all we're doing is on our server, we're grabbing the user. And then on the client side, we're just going ahead and welcoming the user in. So we look at the welcome page here, you can see we get our welcome my email because we're successfully signed in and we did all that stuff server side. So it's just when we go ahead here 
in our page.svelte and we run our sign in with email, we're going to go ahead and say should or and we go ahead and say sign in with GitHub. We're going to go ahead and say sign in with OAuth provider GitHub. And then the big thing is we're going to say our redirect is going to go to localhost 5173 slash auth slash callback. And on this callback, we're going to take in that code, exchange it for a session, and the user signed in. So that is the new Supabase SDK. It really only impacts your authentication system and the actual Supabase clients you're creating on both the client and the server. And I really like it. I want to sort of finish this video by giving my high level thoughts on Supabase and where it sits right now. I get a lot of questions of people asking whether or not it's worth using in projects and if it should be adopted and all that stuff. And I think my answer right now is it seems to me that Supabase is kind of going through a transition where they're moving into more of the kind of modern web world. This is a huge part of that. They seem to really be embracing and getting in with these new modern meta frameworks, the new way of building things, the um, Svelte kits of the world, the Next.js's of the world. Their tooling is getting better and better for that stuff. And something I'm super excited about, which is currently in alpha testing, but will hopefully be released to the general public later this year, is their new data branching system. Having branching environments for your Supabase instance will make this full stack development pipeline so much better. And I'm super excited for that feature. I recently got access to the internal alpha. I'm going to give it a shot very soon here. Um, I need to go through and test it. There's going to be a bunch of things that I need to figure out on there, uh, but I'm very excited for that. I think that will be a game changing feature. And if they get that right, I think uh, Supabase will become an incredibly compelling product. It's Currently, the way I see it is it's a really great way of using Postgres. It has a good authentication system. Um, I will fully admit that their documentation is lacking. Figuring out the PKCE authentication and getting that little SvelteKit example set up was way more difficult than it should have been. The, the documentation just feels wrong, and I think I need to really sit down and crystallize why that is, um, but that is a huge problem I do have with it. I think uh, the gold standard for documentation to me has always been Prisma. And I, they're, they're nothing. They're not even close to on that level. So uh, I want to talk about why that is, but not in this video. Um, so yeah, overall, I think it looks very good. This new SSR library is a must if you're using Supabase in a project. I will link this video in the comments of the Supabase deep dive I did a while back. Uh, pretty much everything in that video remains the same except for this part. Uh, instead of using the SvelteKit auth helpers, you now just need to replace all those creation functions with this new Supabase SSR SDK and then it should work just fine. So yeah, that's about it. I hope if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe and I will talk to you soon.